have the complete rig, little treble hook, L rig. I will be showing how to do this knot a bit later. A small bead, the main ply, or in this case the main ply, and a separate little head that I tied that you can push on. So you have two modular parts here, and one rig, and here are some examples of other types of rigs you could do. Uh, you, of course you can switch out the heads depending on what you need. Floating type heads, more heavy, lighter, and you can even combine bigger flies on one rig to make a pretty big lure. The kind of one of, at least one of the good things about this system is that you're not tying flies on, on big heavy hooks. So even a, a big combination like this, it doesn't really weigh uh, weigh that much and it's easier to cast even though it's a, a big profile and a big fly. So let's go go over the Elric knot that we use with this modular system. You'll need your tippet of choice. I've picked a colored one to just hopefully make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing with the knot. When you uh, want to do this complete, you'd have to slide on the modular fly components that you want as your finished system. You want a small diameter bead that you want to slide on here as well to prevent the knot to go through the actual tube fly. You can use these small diameter beads like I have here. You can also use there's these plastic uh, float stops that specimen fishermen use. Those are also good to, to pop on here to prevent the knot from going through the, the tube fly. So we have to remember that we have to slide on the parts that we want to be the finished fly before we do the knot. Um, because the end here of course would be attached to your fly line. and So if we do the knot and everything before we cannot slide on the he flies. So this is basically just to show you the, the actual knot. Um, there's a little trick here with the treble hook and um, that trick is, is finding the uh, hook bend or hook point that's in angle with the actual eye of the treble hook. So in this case this is the hook. I hope you can see that it's kind of it's in angle and it's it's following the eye. If I turn the hook and I look at the other eyes, you can see the, the hook point and the angle of the bend here. The eye is turned as opposed to this, this line here. So try to find the one that, that uh, is in, in line with the eye. And, and just a note uh, with, um, with regards to treble hooks on this system, don't go too big on, on the, um, the size of the treble hook. Smaller is, is actually uh, usually better for hook rates, but of course you have to kind of find a, a hook that, that matches the size of flies that you're, you're tying. Okay, so we have the treble aligned the way we want. You feed the tippet through the eye of the treble hook. Make sure you have a good amount of, of tippet going through. What you then do is, you just form a loop, like so. Take the end, feed it through the loop, and we'll be doing that five times. So, one, two, three, four, five times. Pull it in a little bit. What we then want to do is, we want to find the middle loop here. I managed to do that with my fingernails, open up that loop. What you can also do is you can also take the treble hook and open up this, just put the 
poke point through and open up the loop. Like so what you then want to do is you want to feed the treble through the loop. That way we get this loop going through. An important note here is you don't want this loop to be long like this. You actually want it to be fairly short. And what you can do is you can pull the, the end here to make the loop smaller again. So as we tighten up the knot, we want to kind of adjust this as, as we go. So let me just pull the knot a bit together. Like so. You can see if I pull the treble again through. We want to form a small eye on, as a result of, of getting the trouble through. I hope you can see that there's still a little loop on the trouble side. And we don't want that loop to be very big, so something like, like so. What you then want to do is you want to hold the treble so you don't have any of the hook points exposed and then you want to moisten up this, this knot before you tighten it. Just make sure you don't hook yourself in the tongue or lips. So I moistened it up a bit and now we're actually ready to tighten up this knot. So let's tighten it up. And as you can see here, hopefully, we have a little tippet loop hanging down where the treble is, is hanging. So the treble is hanging freely in the loop. And it's at a 90 degree angle from the main tippet line. Um, going through here. So that's what we want. Now you can trim off the tag end. Like so. And then we have a finished knot with the treble hanging at a 90 degree angle downwards. So now that we know how to do the actual Elric knot, let's look at some of the fast variations you can do when you want to combine tubes on this system. So here we have the knot we did earlier. Um, as I said previously, of course, before you have to, before you do the knot, you have to put on the flies and the, and the bead and everything, but just to make kind of easy demonstration of, of the possibilities of this system, I'll be just having this short rig here so I can put on the beads and the, and the flies from the from this end. So first slide on bead and hopefully uh, this will show you the point that the bead prevents the knot from going through and going into the tube fly, which would result the treble to actually not hang freely at a 90 degree angle. It would kind of pull the treble into the tube fly, which is, if you've used tube flies before, is what you normally do. So with this system, you, you have the hook hanging freely at a 90 degree angle. And that's what uh, enhances the hook up rate of this system. So bead first as a prevention from go, letting the knot go through. Then you have your flies, your system components. So this is just a red tack in a kind of large sea trout variation. Then if I wanted to slide on, say, a different head. That's a possibility. This could be weighted. In this case it's it's just a kind of a non-weighted color version. Slides on here. We could swap this out if we uh, we have fish kind of going to the surface or we want to make a more surface impact. We could have chosen to slide on a Deer head type head for this in this modular system. We could slide on bigger component to make a bigger fly. Try that. I 
like so. And as you can see, this kind of quickly allows you to have many different uh, variations and um, also kind of if you want to slide on uh, weighted parts to, to make the fly have a certain movement or a fish at a certain depth, that's a, a quick way to modify your, your system to your fishing needs. Just a quick note on the actual tying of the tube flies. If you have a long tail coming off of the fly, it's a very good idea to have the tube. Even though the fly is this long, it's a good idea to have the tube kind of extend backwards so that the treble is hanging off the tail at the back of the fly. That way you don't get uh, the tail to tangle into the treble as much as if the treble was hanging here, from here instead. So this is a good little trick. Uh, of course you're going to use a bit more tube, but um, let it extend stand backwards so the treble is hanging at the end of the tail. That way also if you have fish that only nibble or they're not aggressively taking the fly, there's a bigger chance that you'll hook those fish with the treble hanging at the end of the tail.